Hi, this is Janet. And Joe. With Grow Shop. And welcome to our Gear Motor Basics series. In this video, we get to the heart of the topic of gear motor selection with two methods for pairing motors and reducers to create the optimal gear motor for any given application. In this first method, we'll look at how you select a gearbox, select a motor, and then put the two together. In method two, we'll take a look at selecting a pre-engineered integrated gear motor. It's probably not surprising to you that the first method takes more work. However, we think it's important you understand the engineering that goes into the optimization process of matching a reducer and a motor, even if you're choosing an integrated solution. From our experience, the best method for configuring the optimal gear motor is to start by selecting a gearbox that will give you the right speed and torque output requirements for an application. Then, working backwards from the gearbox selection, we select the motor that provides the appropriate speed and torque inputs for the selected gearbox, the motor outputs. Once the motor is selected, the actual speed, torque, and efficiency need to be calculated. This chart assumes the motor and reducer reference charts we shared in previous videos and have included the links below have been used to make some basic type selections. Then you need to refer to the manufacturer data for those components to make the calculations. Let's take a deeper look at these steps. Realize the whole process may require several repetitions to determine the optimal gear motor combination. For the sake of time, we won't repeat the often multiple process repetitions. Let's assume the application speed and torque have been determined. This is step one. And now we're ready to start by selecting the reducer. When reviewing manufacturer data for reducers, the ultimate goal is to find the output torque, which leads to the proper reducer size. The amount of torque the reducer will be able to produce is dependent on what we call primary reducer data. The efficiency curve, life curve, thermal rating, and maximum input speed. These four specifications allow us to determine when a reducer's output torque is limited by thermal or mechanical constraints. Notice we aren't talking about reducer ratios at this point. Even though it will impact the torque rating, it's typically determined later in the process during the motor selection. The first step to determining output torque is to match the life requirements of the gearbox using the gearbox manufacturer's life curve. The curve illustrates the load a gearbox can withstand over time based on the mechanical strength of its components. Be aware that the time range on the x-axis, 0 to 8,000 hours, varies from manufacturer to manufacturer depending on their gearbox type and testing protocols. The life curve also gives us yield strength, which is the torque value where the components of the reducer will fail. This life curve is an example of a continuous duty life curve. There are no adjustments made to the reducer's life for other conditions such as side loading, which would affect the output bearings, or temperature, which would affect both lubrication and duty cycle. Next, we need to look at the efficiency curve. It's important to review these curves when making a reducer selection, so be sure to get them from the manufacturer. Our sample curve is for a planetary gearbox and is a graph of torque versus efficiency. It's important to emphasize that efficiency is not constant with torque. This data is used to calculate the torque capacity of a gearbox from a thermal standpoint. An important observation to make from the graph is that selecting a gearbox that is too large for the application will result in operating in the low efficiency range of the curve. For instance, using this gearbox in an application with less than 50 inch pounds of torque is extremely inefficient and is not using the gearbox to its full potential. A reducer that will operate at peak efficiency in the continuous torque region for the application needs to be selected. Now we determine the maximum heat that the gearbox can dissipate at the maximum temperature the gearbox will allow. This is known as the maximum allowable dissipated heat, or energy. The heat generated in the gearbox is a function of its efficiency and is determined from testing and theoretical calculations. Once the maximum allowable dissipated heat is determined, the dissipated watts, or energy, at the application load point and efficiency needs to be calculated. Then it's compared to the maximum allowable dissipated energy. This series of equations compares the calculated dissipated watts to the manufacturer's specified maximum allowable dissipated watts and ensures that the calculated watts do not exceed the maximum allowable watts. First, the output power is calculated using the speed and output torque requirements of the application. Next, using the efficiency at that output torque, calculate the dissipated watts. Then, make sure it falls below the maximum allowable watts as specified by the manufacturer. So, 
we've collected all the data that we need for reducer calculations to determine the mechanical and thermal limitations. We have an efficiency curve determined by the yield strength and continuous duty torque, as well as we determined a thermal capacity. This data allows us to select a suitable family of gearboxes that could meet the application if matched with the right motor. Up next, we discuss selecting a motor to pair with our reducer. Check out the link below for our gear motor selection chart. And as always, for more information about GrowShop or any of our gear motor products, check out our website at www.growshop.com.